Hey guys, today we got a differential equation we want to solve with the power series solution, except today we're solving about a regular singular point. So we've got the differential equation here, xy double prime plus y prime plus 2xy equals 0. We want to find a power series solution about the regular singular point x is 0 equals 0. So the, why is this a regular singular point? Well, it's a singular point because that makes this coefficient 0 divide it through, we see that it satisfies the definition of a regular singular point. So when we use a regular singular point as our point of expansion for power series solution, we use the method of Frobenius to guess a solution of this form, series n equals 0 to infinity cn x minus x0 to the n plus r. Here x0 equals 0. So our series solution guess is going to be y equals the sum n goes from 0 to infinity cn x to the n plus r. So we're going to start off with that guess. We're going to differentiate that. We're going to differentiate it again, plug all that in, do our recurrence relation, try to find the recurrence relation for this power series for the initial roots. The initial roots are going to be the r values that we find. All right, so we start off, we got our series of this form sum 0 to infinity cn x to the n plus r. All we got to do is differentiate that to get y prime. That's going to be the sum 0 to infinity. Differentiating this with respect to x, we're going to get cn times n plus r x to the n plus r minus 1. And then lastly, we need y double prime y double prime is going to be equal to the sum 0 to infinity cn n plus r. Differentiating again, we bring this exponent down, n plus r minus 1, x to the n plus r minus 2. Now we take these three and we substitute them into our differential equation. So our differential equation had x, y double prime. So that's going to be x times the series n goes from 0 to infinity cn n plus r n plus r minus 1 x to the n plus r minus 2. Then the next term was just plus y prime. So in this case we just plug in plus this series right here, y prime, n equals 0 to infinity, cn, n plus r, x to the n plus r minus 1. And then it said plus 2x plus 2x y, that's just the series 0 to infinity, cn, x to the n plus r. And then that whole differential equation was equal to 0. So equal to 0. Now what we're going to do is we're going to simplify first. So simplify by pulling this x in up here and pulling this 2x in. So the 2 can come here. The x can come in up here as an exponent of plus 1. All right, so we've got our simplified forms. And we want to have the same exponent on x before we can combine the series. So we want to get the same exponent on x, but we also want to have the series starting at the same values. So we need the same exponent on x, and we need the series to start at the same values. So our goal is to make, we're going to make our exponent x to the n, or actually k plus r. So we're going to make our exponent x to the k plus r. So in each series, we're going to have to ask ourselves, what do we need to let k equal to get x to the k plus r? So here, in the first series, we're going to let k equal n minus 1. Same thing in the second. In the last one, we're going to let k equal n plus 1. So I want to make the exponent x to the k plus r, and also, so we also need 
series to start at the same index. And I also need the series to start at the same index. Once we have these two, then we can combine it all into a single series. So let's, let's re-index the series. All right, so we've just copied the series over here. Now to re-index the first sum, we're going to let k equal n minus 1, which just means that n would equal k plus 1. Now, based on this substitution, k equals n minus 1, if n equals 0, then k is equal to negative 1. Same thing in the middle series, I'm going to let k equal n minus 1, so then n will equal k plus 1. And then if n equals 0, k is going to equal negative 1. If n goes to infinity, well k still goes to infinity, so the upper bound is going to stay the same. The lower bound changes through these substitutions. And then the last one, we're going to let k equal n plus 1. And then that's going to tell us that n is equal to k minus 1. And here, if n equals 0, then k is going to equal 1. So it's really just like a u substitution, but we're just doing it for our integral. So the sum is going to become the series k equals negative 1 to infinity. Now it's going to be ck plus 1 times k plus 1 plus r. And then the next one, I have k plus 1 plus r minus 1. That's just going to be k plus r. And then I have x to the k plus r, because that was my whole goal in doing this, was to get this exponent to become k plus r. Now, plus the sum, k equals negative 1 to infinity, ck plus 1. Now, k plus 1 plus r then x to the k plus r plus the sum. The last one now is the sum k equals 1 to infinity, 2 ck minus 1 times x to the k plus r equals 0. Now we've succeeded in making all the exponents the same. I need to have all the series to start at 1 because this one starts at negative 1, this one starts at negative 1, this one starts at 1. Well, to get them to all start at the same value, the only thing I can do is make this one start at 1 and make this one start at 1. And what we're going to do is evaluate the series at k equals negative 1 and k equals 0 for the first two, and then leave the rest as k goes from 1 to infinity. And then they'll all start at k equals 1. So evaluate the first two at k equals negative 1 and k equals 0. And then the same thing here in the middle, evaluate at k equals negative 1 and k equals 0. And then we'll have the rest can start at k equals 1. So if we evaluate these at k equals negative 1, this would give me for the first series, plug in k equals negative 1, I get c0 times negative 1 plus 1 plus r is just r and then negative 1 plus r we could just call that r minus 1 x to the r minus 1 so that's evaluating at k equals 0 uh, k equals negative 1 then plus evaluate at k equals 0 i get c1 times 0 plus 1 plus r would be r plus 1 And then 0 plus r would just be r. x to the 0 plus r would just be r. So that evaluates the first series at negative 1 and 0. And then I'll write plus the sum k equals 1 to infinity. And then just copy this down here. ck plus 1, k plus 1 plus r, k plus r x to the k plus r. 
So that's the first series written out, but just taking off the first two terms, k equals negative 1, k equals 0. Now do the same thing for the second series. Evaluate it at k equals negative 1. That's going to give us c0 times negative 1 plus 1 would be 0 plus r, so that's just r, x to the r minus 1, plus, plug in k equals 0, get c1 times r plus 1, x to the r, plus, now the sum goes from 1 to infinity, and then ck plus 1, k plus 1 plus r, x to the k plus r, plus, and then just rewrite this last series, nothing changes there, k equals 1 to infinity, 2ck minus 1, x to the k plus r, equals 0. All right, so if we factor out the terms c0, x to the r minus 1, that's going to leave r times r minus 1 plus r. And if we factor out the c1, x to the r, we have r times r plus 1 plus r plus 1. So actually, this is a nice factorization that happens. And also, if we combine the series, the three series, into a single series, we get this term here in brackets, factoring out x to the k plus r. Now this equals zero if and only if these coefficients are equal to zero. So linear independence will imply c0 times r, r minus 1 plus r equals zero. And c1 times, well we can factor out an r plus 1 from this term and from this term, which will leave an r plus 1. So actually it's r plus 1 squared. And then the bracket, everything in the bracket is going to be 0. So all the coefficients of all the x terms have to be 0 by linear independence. So then this bracket, ck plus 1 times k plus 1 plus r times k plus r plus ck plus 1 times k plus 1 plus r plus 2ck minus 1 equals 0. And this is true for all k greater or equal to 1. Let's take some terms here. We got r squared minus r plus r. So really that top term just becomes c0 r squared equals 0. And the bottom term is really just c1 r plus 1 squared equals 0. Now the method of Frobenius assumes that c0 is not 0. So c0 is not 0, which tells us that r squared has to be 0. So r squared equals 0. And we always get this, what we call, initial root r equals 0 from assuming c0 is not 0. So always the coefficient of c0 right here is going to be 0. So this is what we call our initial root. So this is the initial root, and it's actually repeated in this example. So this initial root r equals 0. So if r equals 0, then the only way that this thing can be 0, so if we take r equals 0, plug it in here, then that's going to imply that c1 has to be 0. So actually we get r equals 0, and then we get that the coefficient c1 has to be 0. What we're going to do now is we're going to solve for ck plus 1 down here in this last equation. Solve for ck plus 1. Alright, so we're going to solve for ck plus 1, and we're not going to want to forget that we should plug in r equals 0. So don't forget that r equals 0. So we're going to plug that in, solve for ck plus 1. When we do that, we get ck plus 1 equals negative 2ck minus 1 over k plus 1 squared. You can verify the algebra on that. So that's going to be our reference relation. So this is the reference relation for the initial root in this example. So it's important to know that k has to be greater or equal to 1, but 
what if we want to get some non-zero terms here? If we want to get some non-zero terms, then we plug in k equals 1. And we get c2 is equal to negative 2c0 over 2 squared, which is equal to negative 2c0 over 4, which would be negative c0 over 2. So there's a relationship between c2 and c0. Now k equals 2, we're going to get c3 equals negative 2c1 over 3 squared. But c1 is 0, so this is just going to be 0. And actually all odd coefficients are going to equal 0. So we only worry about the k equals odd terms to get the even coefficient. So we'll plug in k equals 3 here, and we would get that c4 is equal to negative 2c2 over 4 squared to be equal to negative 2 over 16. And then plug in what c2 is in terms of c0, we get negative c0 over 2. And this will just be c0 over 16. And then plug in k equals 5, because we're going to skip the even k's to get the odd coefficients because they're all 0. So we get c6 be equal to negative 2c4 over 6 squared, which would be equal to negative 2 over 36 times c0 over 16, which would be equal to negative c0 over 288. So we got some terms here in terms of c0. If we expand our series out, we can get some non-zero terms in our series. So if we go back and we say, okay, our solution y was equal to the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity, cn x to the n plus r. But we've found already that r equals 0, and we know some relationship between our coefficients. So actually this is just going to be c0. x to the 0 plus 0 is just 1 plus c1, x to the 1 plus 0 is just x, plus c2, x squared, plus c3, x cubed, plus c4, x to the 4, plus c5, x to the 5th, plus, plus c6, x to the 6th, and then so on. All the odd terms, coefficients are 0, so these are all 0. So I don't even have to worry about those anymore. And now we just have to remember that c0 minus c2 was c0 over 2x plus c4 in terms of c0, if we look back, c0 over 16 plus c0 over 16x to the 4. This should have been squared, sorry. Minus c0 over 288 x to the 6th plus, and you just keep going. So these are the first four non-zero terms of the series. And we can factor out c0, and we can get a power series expansion that only has even terms in it. But anyway, that's, that's how we do it. That's the method of Frobenius, and that's actually a repeated root that only gives you one solution. To get a second linearly independent solution, you have to do some more work, but we're not going to necessarily go through that today.